Hey everybody, today we're going to watch this pool go from the very beginning to the main monopore of the shell, which we just did yesterday. If you want to watch the rest of the progress to the final fill, don't forget to click subscribe and click the little bell so you get notified when we post more videos. Okay guys, um, we're up here at the, uh, the McCarthy pool up above the Palm de Terre River, and everybody's been asking me, they've seen the vinyl liner video, they're like, okay, you said stuff about monopore, what are you talking about? And this is a monopore. Um, I'm gonna get into the pour here in a second, you'll get to see that. But what we're doing is we are competing with gunite at this point. Uh, vinyl liner does not have to be this structurally significant. Um, but this one, we want a one piece concrete shell. That's all gunite is, it's a concrete shell shot through a gun. Um, we are able to form it and pour it with just a regular pump truck. Um, so we will be pouring the walls and it will spill out under our, through our monopore legs into the catch basin. This has got a spill over over here. And then it will, as it fills up, it'll spill into here. It'll do this all the way around and we will finish the floor and the walls all at the same time with no cold joints. So it'll be one monolithic shell, just like gunite with the addition of having an insulated wall, which makes it infinitely easier to heat, which is amazing. That's also why we have a spray foam floor two inches of closed cell foam to give us a thermal break between the earth there's no point in heating the ground so we're trying to thermally break our warm water from the outside elements you know if it if it's if it's got a cover on it you're you're completely covered this one won't because of you know some architectural features on it got our linear main drain set we got four more of those in the catch basin to suck most of the water out of the catch sending it back in and over the waterfall hot tub um, this one is super cool obviously because of the setting so stay tuned and uh, I'll show you the pour and you'll see kind of how it goes. This one's a lot of work. Um, not going to lie, this one is not a DIY sort of situation, but it is, uh, it's very viable and uh, it's right on point cost-wise with gunite. So, you know, it's a better pool. The next step on uh, the McCarthy pool, the boys are here, uh, Sean and the boys at Massey Foam are uh, doing the closed cell on the gravel. And that, what that does, guys, that really helps is, you know, it's really steep in here. We can't really form and walk around on that gravel without messing it up with every step. So this is going to give us a nice hard shell to, uh, to walk around on. And uh, then we'll be able to place the, uh, you know, we'll place the hot tub back in here, put it on its mono legs, and go ahead and finish the forming. So this will all be one big shell after this. They got a little issue up in their trailer so I can talk a little more. Uh, without it being too noisy, but the other I mean obviously we do this anytime we're heating the pool It's ideal, but we use the spray foam instead of like your dowel board or your foam board Because it honestly gets down in the gravel and kind of grabs and makes everything really firm Just makes it a lot easier to tie rebar on top of it and everything else a little bit pricier But it's worth it on a pool like this But the main reason we're doing this guys is for a thermal break We've got this awesome thermal break in the wall this ICF now you've got a thermal break on the floor there's no sense heating the ground with all those BTUs and uh, it makes a huge difference. The pools we've done this on are, are heating for just so much less. But see what we're going to do is when they spray foam right up to the ICF, then we're going to cut away 12 inches because the, the floor is 12 inches thick of concrete and it'll actually pour in and it'll go down the ICF wall all in one piece. It'll fill in down to my catch basin. So it's a pretty cool system we've got and uh, it works really well. I mean, it is... Uh, the pucker factor on these pours are very high. A lot of mud and a lot that can go wrong, but uh, we've been, uh, I think we got it down pat. We'll keep showing you the details. Okay, so the spray foam's all done, ready for the rest of the ICF and rebar. Okay guys, so this pool obviously has got curved walls. I'm not gonna get into super great detail. I may do a whole video on how to bend ICF. So like I said, Fox Blocks makes radius forms anywhere from four foot, five foot, six foot, seven foot, eight foot, nine foot, and 10 foot, I think. But they come in little 16 inch, center pieces and they they create a bastard joint every 16 inches which is a lot to deal with we figured out that when we do the math right we can make our radii um follow any any bend we want and as long as we take that section out of exactly the same point between every web it will stack obviously i mean this whole thing and so we we take out in this case we've taken out an inch on this lesser bend over here we're taking out seven sixteenths and then we curve you see all the slice marks we kerf in like halfway with a skill saw or when they're a slight bend, we just use a knife and just make a whole bunch of scores. And then uh, it'll line up and just put it on like we normally would. And you kind of, it's a little more of a wrestling match than it is with uh, 
a little more of a wrestling match than it is with the regular form, but it's still pretty easy. So, like I said, this pool is going to show you a lot of the answers to the questions you've been asking about other things in liners and monopores, but that's bent ICF forms. Okay, all the ICF and rebar is done and we're ready to pour. All right, guys, pump truck's rolling out. Concrete's going to be here in about 20 minutes. Uh, just wanted to quick, before I cover it up, kind of show you what we do on the rebar. We have two layers of rebar, one on three inch chairs on 16 inch centers, running back into every wall, tying into the vertical rebar in every other web. Then we put another row of three inch continuous chairs to elevate the second mat six inches up into the concrete. And that one ties into every other web. So we have a vertical in every single web. And if you look from above, it's on eight inch centers, uh, obviously suspended in two different levels of the concrete. This floor will be 12 inches thick. We're using a 4,000 PSI pump wall mix, which is uh, basically a river sand mix, very, very strong. And uh, I'll kind of talk you through the whole pour today. We're getting ready to go. Okay, guys, we're off and rolling. And what I'm doing is we're actually working on the catch basin down below, but I'm, I'm plugging up the big 12-inch core spillover wall, putting about a foot and a half of concrete. They'll actually stack vertically. So uh, I'm just going back and forth, adding a little bit of mud. And then I got boys down below me working, working on the uh, working on the catch basin. And then I'll show you vibrating it and stuff in a minute. You'll see me kind of jumping around doing different tasks. Because if you've ever noticed, once in a while you'll see a guy run through my frame that's Amish. Most of my guys are Amish. They, they prefer to not be on camera, so I edit them out. And, uh, sorry man. You call it win and I'll move. Okay, there we go. That's stacking nice. Good. Little more, okay. Nice. I'll, I'll plug the whole thing. We can actually... When you get the mix right, you can actually stack it in the ICF without it spilling out into the bottom much. It's actually pretty awesome. So uh, I'm doing that, and the boys are going to do the catch base, and we're kind of anchoring. We're just trying to anchor the, the, the bottom of the pour so it doesn't try to push downhill with any pressure. So I'm going to work my way all the way down this wall. Once we get we're past the uh, where the catch basin is the same height, as the floor of the pool, which it is at the deep end, we will uh, we'll start vibrating that. They're vibrating down there right now. And uh, I'll vibrate around the main drains. Come up just a little bit. There you go, perfect. So anyway, stay tuned. I'll show you the next step. Okay guys, just wanted to show you real quick. You can see how it's filling out at the bottom, but I'm actually stacking the concrete about two and a half feet higher than that, just to show you what the uh, ICF is capable of doing. It'll hold the concrete back. We can stack vertically. And then as we go about the day, my guys will be in the bottom working it and we'll make a circular pass to keep from having cold joints in the bottom of the pool. And then we'll do a wall pass. And we'll just keep vibrating each uh, lift into the one before it. We'll do the same thing in the floor. And we will end up with a monolithic pour with no cold joints over the entire shell of the pool. Similar to Gunite, only with an insulated wall and insulated floor. Okay guys, my mic came unhooked while I was shooting this part of the video, but basically I'm just showing you how my guys normally uh, vibrate around the bottom. And what that's doing, that's just taking out the entrained air and consolidating the concrete. Um, if you see guys doing it too long, you'll see the gravel kind of settle out and uh, it'll separate from the pure and you don't want to do that. So you just kind of hit it long enough to knock the air out, get it you know, tightly around the rebar, but then you, uh, then you stop. And then every time we do another pass, we'll vibrate the, uh, the old pass or the new pass into the old pass, uh, do it in the walls as well. So you won't see me showing this a lot because like I said, usually it's my Amish guys doing it, but I was trying to show kind of how it's done and my mic was unhooked. All right guys, I just want to show you this. If you get the mix right, like I said, this is about a four slump when it came, we wet it up a little bit. Look at this, we're stacking the wall. The fast foot is holding it on the outside from spilling out. But you can see how little they're spilling out on the inside. So we're able to really control what we're doing. We're finishing this catch basin wall before the floor's even got mud. If you get it too wet, it just runs to the bottom. So it's very technical to get everything right. It takes, uh, takes time with your uh, pump operator, your concrete plant. Everybody's got to be working in concert. But it works really, really well. So I just wanted to show you that and uh, I got to throw them some more mud into the bottom so I can just go back and forth 
between the bottom and the uh, and the wall and just kind of keep a wet edge everywhere. Works great. On the back of the catch basin, the dig was so close we didn't use fast foot. So I want to show you just how much will run out if you don't have that. That fast foot is actually really doing a lot. As you can see, it, it's, it's not it's not going to hurt anything, but we're losing a little bit of mud that we uh, we could save if we wanted to mess with. Oh shoot! Quit talking. Work right. All right. Okay, guys, so at this point in the pour, we are done with the catch basin. Um, basically, we just get everything to about a Fresno trowel float, and uh, then the guys between trucks, the guys are kind of regrouping, getting ready to go in the bottom of the pool. We're going to make another pass on the walls. So you can see they've kind of magged it along the edge of the pool, and I'm magging the top edge there uh, on the parts of the wall that are actually completely full. Um, we just really need everything to a mag finish because it's all getting a coping put on top afterwards. So honestly, a mag finish is pretty good because it leaves it rough enough that whatever thin set or uh, bonding mortar we use will, will bite really nicely. And uh, that, that's really all it takes. So the finishing process is not hard on these pools. It's just more the uh, timing and the effort that has to go into it. And uh, John Martin sacrificed his drone. It's somewhere on that cliff, but he got us one heck of a shot. So we appreciate that. Okay, guys, we're just taking a little pause between the uh, trucks here to set our bar stools. Right here, we're going to have a uh, kind of a raised bar. We've got them all laid out, and I'm setting them in the mud. They're going to put screws in each one. Then we will, uh, after they level them, we'll cut them off to that 2x4, and that's our grade. And then at the very end, we'll come back and uh, fill those up too. Five bar stools, kind of a raised bar, just another cool feature you can do with these monopores. And just one more drone shot at the end of the pour to showcase that view one more time. That is awesome. All right, guys, we got it done. I'll show you some video from different angles and whatnot. Just wanted to kind of show you up close. You see the fast foot bag. If you ever see a lot of the monopores, you know I did the video. I'll link it right here. Of the, that's a purely a fast foot video. But this is what we do on the pools. We attach it to the outside so it holds the concrete back. The inside, it allows it to flow in. If you get it too wet, it's just going to all flow in, but we get the mix just right. Like I said, about a four slump, um, real pumpable mix, and it'll stack up in the wall. Everything is about the fast foot fabric and these legs. I mean, you guys know I'm in love with these legs, but this is what makes this whole system possible. There are guys out there that are doing plaster style ICF pools in multiple pours. I've, I've read the engineering on it. It, it seems a lot easier. Um, I like to do it without cold joints. Everybody says this is an awesome way of doing it. It's harder, but we're, we're pretty decent at it, so we're, uh, this is what we do. But just kind of, everybody's been asking it when I mentioned it in that last video about the vinyl liner. Um, it, you, I'll link that video too so you can kind of see the difference. And uh, before the end of this video, I'm going to take you uh, back to the big job and show you that pool because it's much closer to being ready for plaster. Kind of give you a little update on that job too. But this one is, uh, is done for the day. I'll show you some clips from a couple different angles, maybe fly the drone for a minute. Okay guys, real quick before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to show you, this is at the big house, obviously I showed this in a preview a while back. We've got the uh, glass, it's not quite cleaned up, but uh, the, the acrylic wall all uh, peeled off. And this one's a little closer to plaster, so the one I you know, showed you pouring today, now we'll have to skin it with a cement board or hardy backer. And we used to, we'd just use cidercrete, which would be like a fiber, um, fiberglass and uh, stucco coat and then a modified plaster but what we're doing now because we don't really love that finish is we have bought a an eco finish uh, rig so we're actually gonna be able to do a thermoplastic powder coat but it's kind of applied with a, basically a flamethrower so you got to put something fire retardant on there so you don't burn the uh, burn the forms so we're almost ready we, uh, the machinery arrived already but we're waiting on the powder and uh, a couple guys to come train us on the material but this will all be black in here um, to go with it. this coping once it's sealed to be pretty much jet black so it'll look like a mirror that's spilling over all the way around the only thing that doesn't spill over is this wall and so this tile patio just comes right in wraps around this is the hot tub it's got a little acrylic wall about six inches high gonna sit there and separate it from the uh, separate the bodies of water and uh, you know like I said I'm gonna bring this one to you in full as soon as it's done but in the meantime I just wanted to show you that next step and right before we uh, take off I'm gonna show you a completely finished pool real quick and uh, just kind of show you what these monopores can, uh, can look like. All right, guys, end of a long day at the end of a longer week, but we got a lot of good stuff done. 
I just wanted to show you a finished pool. I know this has been in a preview video uh, before because I will, I'm in the process of shooting a home tour for this entire project. I did not build the house. The uh, homeowner ended up building most of it herself and it has been going on for about six years and it is uh, 15,000 square feet of all ICF, light deck, amazing quality. Probably one of the nicest houses in the country, definitely one of the nicest houses in, uh, in the Midwest. And I mean, I'm, by quality, I mean, you may love the style, you may not love the style, but the quality is undeniable. I did build this pool, ICF, monopour, just like what I've been showing you in this video. This is Cidercrete plaster. It's a pool plaster that's made for ICF. Works really well. This one actually looks great, um, but sometimes they get a little chalky and we just don't love them. We're really excited about the eco finish. She's actually gonna be one of our guinea pigs. She's gonna, we're gonna refinish this one with eco finish about Labor Day. But this pool's a year round pool because it's got this dome. Like I said, in the home tour, I'm gonna get all into that. Um, every detail of this house. It'll probably be a really tough video to keep to a reasonable length. But for today, I just wanted to show you kind of a finished product. I hate posting a video halfway through a pool, but I really wanted to show you a monopore. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time.